So let's move on to tactical advice, and then we're going to do a mid-journey. We're going to show you how to sculpt with wood uh, with Jeff here in a sec. So uh, if you could just give us uh, a little bit of tactical advice and then um, some of the best lessons that you've learned in your experiences, Olivier, with you and your team with uh, mid-journey. Yeah, so with AI to switch tool. Um, because what I see sometimes is people trying to do everything in mid journey or everything in that. And no, if you want text, um, you have to take the image, go in Photoshop, put the text or in Illustrator or in, in design. Um, if you want to add a logo, Illustrator is better. So it, it's like there is a moment to switch tool. And yes, I'm Swiss. And yes, uh, the Victorinox knife is from my country. And yes, in theory with it, you can open a ravioli, ravioli box with it. But in practice, it takes an hour and a half. So it's much better to use, um, I don't know how you say, um, something to open one of those uh, uh, can, can, can opener, opener, can opener uh, than a Victorinox tool. So today you can try to do everything with Mid Journey, but what it does, it's better images. So don't try to write a book with it. It's great at illustration, much better than doing photo, but it, it's amazing at illustration. So learn to switch tools. And all the, um, all, all the things I'm giving you today are today, maybe in two weeks or in a month or in 24 hours, some stuff will change. Um, today, we cannot use AI for subtle emotion. So it means that every time we do a concept, an advertising concept, where we need very subtle emotion from the, from the models, uh, we have to go in a photo shoot because the very subtle emotion we have find so far, no way to prompt um, any of those tools to give subtle emotion. They're always very neutral, so you can imagine an emotion, or they go far too much, like scared, uh, happy. They, they, there's not those subtle uh, light things. So that's what we are missing. Um, and um, yeah, so what I would like you to go with and what I can give you is let's be humble and patient. It started the 30th of, it started the 30th of November. That's less than 160 days ago that those tools are have an interface that makes it fun to play with. Remember that for computer, it was when the mouse appeared. It took 10 years before we tried really to use it. Build a spell book, just because by building it, I'm 100% sure that any, if we all build a spell book, most probably only one of us will have a spell book usable in a year or in a year and a half. And most probably all of them will have to be replaced. But by building that, you create the consistency and the logic that makes you uh, understand how it works and be a cyborg. Uh, really, that's the key that we've learned so fast. Uh, if, if I would share data with you about community management, about SEO, about um, con like every time you do only AI, I'll, human that can outbeat, outbeat it today, we don't know what's coming, but when we mix, if you do the first 80% of the work with AI and finalize with a human, you add beat the human by a fold of two or three or four. So enjoy. And um, I'm, I can answer any question. And, and uh, I'm really happy that I've shared that with you. Merci beaucoup. Uh, beautiful job. Um, if you guys have any questions, please put it in the Q&A. Uh, and Olivier will stick around and answer those. Um, I just want to say that I think the special intelligence of humans is different than the intelligence of artificial intelligence. And so I don't see a near future where uh, cyborgs get beaten by artificial intelligence, um, unless it's for tasks that artificial intelligence are better at by nature. So I think it, the cyborg uh, metaphor where you're a human plus AI, uh, is I think one that's going to last for a little while. Now, technology will make me eat these words, perhaps, uh, but I, I don't think so. I think humans have a kind of associative intelligence that is extremely difficult to program inside of a computer. Hey, Dan, we have a couple of questions real quick for Perfect. Olivier. Um, we have, uh, do you have people on your team sign NDAs to protect your spellbook content? So I have talents, but I really, I'm bad at, at thinking about those problems. So I don't have, I, I should. I think that it's something that I'm missing today in my company is 
today we are not protecting what we do. So it's true that I thought about it when you put ask the question. Today, if I have one of my employees leaving the company, I have nothing to prevent him to copy the spell book and play with it. So I hope that people stay loyal and I hope that we go faster than the copy that will be done. But today I have it, it's it's something we should think about, but I I haven't worked on it, but it's very intelligent to do so. Thank you. Well, well, just really quickly to address that, sorry, you know, you have standard operating procedures and operational manuals that are copyrightable and that you own and that people can sign non-disclosure agreements. And if they take those in the United States, at least, and use them in another job, you can sue them for that. Uh, that's called, uh, you know, industrial espionage, espionage. So at least in the United States, um, that you cannot steal a playbook and use it with your competitor. That is uh, a, a clear violation of intellectual property and most employment agreements protect against that. Uh, back over to you, you Nicole. Um, so Olivier, well, what software did you use to build your spellbook? So, so, so that's the fun part is everyone works with what they like. So for example, for me, I love working in a Google uh, suite. So I put all my prompt in it, but because it's designer, they did it in Figma. And I was like, this is a very bad way to classify it, but it's a bit like, it, it, it wasn't, it's a prototype. It's not, she didn't build, like the spellbook was super good and useful, but she didn't know it would be super good and useful. She was just like, okay, I need to put my thought on a mind map. If I would have done it, I would have used a mirror board or a Google slide because that's what I use. But because she's in Figma every day, Alex started in Figma. And because she started in Figma, now we continue with Figma, but it makes absolutely no sense. We, we should use something where we can categorize and search. It's just, you know, we are with our stick and scissors and we are trying and then we are gonna organize. But for now it's there. Awesome, thank you.